As we begin the 2021 F1 season, there are loads of things to look forward to. Sergio Perez at Red Bull, Carlos Sainz at Ferrari, Sebastian Vettel at Aston Martin, and of course, the return of the speedy Spaniard Fernando Alonso to the team where he enjoyed most of the success in his career. Well, at the age of 39, he's certainly not a spring chicken anymore, but when looking back at those 39 years, you would be a fool to underestimate him. I don't think there's anyone in the world that has a more impressive motorsport CV. He's a two-time F1 World Champion with 32 wins and 97 podiums, two-time Le Mans winner with five class wins and one championship, and he's dabbled a bit in the Dakar Rally and the Indy 500. So yeah, if there's anyone that tops the Motorsport Hall of Fame, it's gotta be Fernando. And with his return to F1 this season, the main questions surrounding his decision are, what can Fernando Alonso bring to Alpine? Can Alpine provide Alonso with a race-winning car? And finally, will we actually see Alonso return to the top step of the podium? Well, stick around for the next 10 minutes or so, as I dive into exactly that. And I've brought a friend along to help as well. So, Fernando Alonso is returning to Formula 1 with the Renault Alpine team for the third time in his career. His first stint with the Enstone based team came in 2002 to 2006, and this is when he won back-to-back -back titles, dethroning the great Michael Schumacher, and also becoming the first ever Spanish world champion too. But after a year of controversy at McLaren in 2007, he returned to Renault for 2008. But the controversy certainly wouldn't stop there, as he was one of the main guys involved in the infamous Crashgate scandal. Quick side note, if you want to know more about Crashgate, I did a full video purely on that incident, so click the card above if you want to know more. So after leaving the team in 2009, he drove a bit for Ferrari and McLaren, enduring some pretty frustrating seasons, before once again coming back to Renault, or now Alpine, for the 2021 season. So the decision by Alpine to sign Alonso was definitely a good choice in general, but there are some questions that still need answering. But for now, let's look at what Alonso can bring to the newly renamed Alpine team for 2021. Well, firstly, the most obvious benefit of bringing in a guy like Fernando is his immense experience, not just from 17 years in Formula 1, but also from different categories in motorsport, where they may learn a few helpful things that may help the development at Alpine. But his experience driving for Ferrari, and especially McLaren's immediate rival McLaren, should not be underestimated and could prove crucial in their title challenge. But this guy doesn't just bring a wealth of experience, he is obviously extremely talented and quick. At least, he was when he left in 2018. And as to whether he will still be quick, well, I guess time will tell. But one thing for sure is Fernando just has a natural ability behind the wheel like no other, which is particularly why he's been so successful in many different motorsport categories. But his obvious and proven skill isn't the only appeal for Alpine. Much like Sebastian Vettel moving to Aston Martin, Alonso returning to Formula 1 with his old team has created and will continue to create headlines and brilliant marketing opportunities because everyone loves a Formula 1 fairy tale. But jokes aside, Alpine need to step up to their promises of being a title winning team, and signing a second rate driver or rookie driver wouldn't really help that. But instead, going for a marquee motorsport icon makes much more sense, and Alonso was always going to be that guy. Yes, of course, if it was up to Alpine, they would sign a Max Verstappen or Lewis Hamilton, but operating within their limitations, Alonso was the perfect driver to go for. He also has a very loyal and quite big fan base stretching across the whole motorsport world, and so this only works out for Alpine as they'll have many more people supporting the team and buying their merch if you can actually afford it. But while Fernando is extremely experienced and a goldmine for the marketing team, there are a few question marks over him ahead of his return, and easily the most talked about is his age. By the mid-season break, he is going to be 40 years old, which for a Formula 1 driver is pushing it, and there's no guarantee that Fernando will be firing on as many cylinders as he did in his glory days. After all, the last time someone over the age of 40 won a race, was Nigel Mansell in 1994, and that's just a win. For the last champion over 40, you need to go all the way back to 1966. So yeah, time will tell as to how much pace he still has, but let's not get our hopes up too much. We all know what happened with Schumacher's return. But his age isn't the only thing going against him at the Alpine team. 
After all, Alonso hasn't competed in F1 for two years, and with winter testing allowing him to get only a day and a half track time, he's going to need some time to get back into the groove of Grand Prix racing. But let's be real, it won't take him very long because that's where his experience pays off. So that's what Alonso brings to Alpine, but what can Alpine offer Alonso? Well, it's your lucky day because I've got a very special guest to take you through exactly that. So welcome fellow F1 YouTuber and Gordon Ramsay doppelganger Aldas to the channel. The return of Fernando Alonso in 2021 is a very interesting and some people might say bizarre story because when he left at the end of 2018, he maintained that he would only come back to Formula 1 if a team offered him a seat that would be capable of consistent podiums and race wins and maybe allow him to challenge for world titles yet again. And despite all of that, he has decided to come back with the newly rebranded Alpine team for 2021. Now, there is no doubt that Alpine are a decent team and they did have a good 2020, but if you look at where Ricardo finished, I would say that the team in general underdelivered last season because Ricardo managed to finish fifth in the title, which I actually think went under the radar quite a little bit, and he only really finished behind Sergio Perez relative to the midfield. But ironically, although he finished ahead of both of the McLaren drivers, the team itself finished two places behind McLaren in the constructors. Now, although I do think that Renault last season did not have as good of a car as McLaren and also Racing Point, I do think that they underdelivered, as I said, and I think that was mainly down to Esteban Ocon, who on his F1 return just underdelivered relative to Daniel Ricciardo. Now, although the team did manage to get three podiums, two courtesy of Ricciardo and one courtesy of Ocon, um, with the best place finish of second, they just weren't as efficient and they weren't as consistent as the likes of McLaren or Racing racing point. Losing Ricardo at the very beginning of 2020 was a massive blow to the team because it isn't just that he is a high caliber driver, it's the fact that he didn't believe in the project and decided to go to McLaren. So for this season, Ocon especially has to improve if he even wants to be in the team in 2022, especially with Pierre Gasly sniffing around. And as for Fernando, there is a huge amount of pressure on his shoulders and a huge amount of skepticism about his comeback because for this to be a success, he has to pick up exactly exactly where Ricardo left off and carry the team and basically lead the team as well and be the number one driver in 2021. So is Alpine the right team for Fernando Alonso to potentially launch a title bid in 2022? I mean, obviously it all depends on the car as it does with every single team. And there is a lot of confidence from the Renault brand and the French government as well who have fully backed the Alpine Formula One team. But there is still a lot of things that both Alpine and Alonso need to sort out in 2021. Alonso has to show that his comeback was justifiable and that he can still pick up exactly where Ricardo left off and compete with the best drivers on the grid and Ocon has to show that he isn't just a number two driver and can actually push and compete with Alonso to make up one of the best driver lineups on the grid so that they can compete with the other midfield teams against them. And then there's the team itself who have to sort out the reliability issues that they had last year and in terms of the management they have to lead the team and combine everything, the drivers, the car, the team around them to make sure that they are the best suited and best prepared for a potential title bid in 2022 to become Formula 1's next world champions. Whether or not it will be Fernando Alonso and whether or not Alonso will win the 2022 World Championship, I don't know. But nevertheless, it is going to be fascinating to watch. Absolute box office controversy, no doubt. And I can't wait to see how it turns out. So yes, Alpine by all means could be a race winning team or maybe a title winning team come 2022 if they play their cards right. But when looking at the management at the team, they aren't really helping themselves all too much. Well, as we know during the off-season, Cyril will left the Renault team, leaving the team principal role empty. So, most teams would just hire a replacement team principal. But what Alpine did was hire Davide Brivio from the Suzuki MotoGP team as the racing director, with Martin Bukowski remaining as executive director. Now, usually a team principal would kind of fill both roles, but Alpine have split them in two. And all I'm thinking is that's going to make any team decisions harder because there are more people involved. I don't know. For all I know, it could be fine and won't be an issue at all. But also, knowing that Alonso as well can be quite political sometimes, I wouldn't be surprised if it complicated things. So, what's my verdict? Will Fernando Alonso help or hinder the Alpine F1 team? 
Well, looking at it generally, I think he will help them thanks to his race winning experience and general aura around him. But if he proves to be a very political and fractious guy like he has on occasion in the past, then it may create a bit of a messy environment at the Alpine team, which is the last thing they need. Either way, I can't tell what the future will hold, and I really hope Fernando can return to the podium, and maybe even the top step if he's lucky. But being realistic, I'm not expecting much this year, purely because they are keeping their cars to themselves heading into 2022, and who knows what's going to happen then. Thanks for watching, let me know in the comments section below if you think Alonso is what Alpine need. And as always, make sure to like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell to be reminded of any new videos. Oh, and make sure to check out Aldas' channel too, the link's in the description below.